Paris, the city of light, wasn't always the sprawling urban marvel we know today. Its origins as a small settlement on the Ile de la Cité, founded by the Parisi tribe, were humble and strategic. Perched on the Seine, it was a centre of trade and defence. The Romans arrived, reshaping the city's destiny as Lutetia. They left behind roads and a blueprint for expansion, but their vision wasn't the grand tapestry of boulevards and monuments we associate with Paris today. The true metamorphosis of Paris came centuries later through conflict, revolution, and the artistic ambitions of rulers and visionaries alike. The medieval period saw Paris grow haphazardly with winding, narrow streets and towering cathedrals that loomed over the populace. Notre Dame, started in the 12th century, was a symbol of Paris's faith and dominance, but the streets below its grandeur were a chaotic jumble. Buildings leaned precariously, as if huddling together for warmth, while the Seine's banks became a labyrinth of trade and daily life. But Paris was a city of ideas as much as it was of structures, and the Age of Enlightenment would bring change, both intellectual and architectural. Enter the 19th century and the man who would transform Paris forever, Baron Georges Eugène Haussmann. Tasked by Napoleon III to modernize the city, Haussmann's vision was nothing short of revolutionary. He carved through the old medieval quarters, raising them to the ground to make way for the wide boulevards that now define Paris. It was a grand urban surgery, with Haussmann wielding the scalpel to create avenues like Rue de Rivoli and Boulevard Saint-Michel. His wide streets were meant to prevent barricades during revolutions, and to ensure the flow of light and air through the city, perhaps even a subconscious nod to the enlightenment Paris had once championed. Haussmann's project wasn't just about aesthetics, it involved the demolition of entire neighborhoods, especially those in the medieval core of Paris, where disease, poverty and overcrowding were rampant. More than 60% of the old city was wiped away, replaced with tree-lined avenues, open squares and vast parks. His work included the modernization of Paris's infrastructure. New sewage systems, aqueducts and reservoirs were installed, drastically improving the city's hygiene and livability. The sweeping changes didn't come without a cost, however, as thousands of Parisians, many of them the city's poorest, were displaced in the process. The social upheaval mirrored the physical destruction creating a city that, while grander and healthier, lost much of its intimate, older character. The transformation of Paris wasn't limited to the surface. Haussmann extended the city limits, annexing surrounding villages such as Montmartre and Passy, which became integral parts of Paris's cultural landscape. The city's population swelled as these outer areas were absorbed, creating a metropolis that reflected both modernity and expansionist ambition. Haussmann's boulevards, designed for efficiency, were also strategic, allowing troops to swiftly navigate the city during uprisings, a lesson learned from the barricades of previous revolutions. The project's scope was staggering, reshaping not just the streets but the way Parisians lived, traveled and interacted with their environment. One of Haussmann's most lasting legacies was the creation of public parks like the Bois de Boulogne and the Parc des Buttes Chaumont. Paris, previously cramped and dense, suddenly had space for leisure. The parks were more than just green spaces, they were statements of progress where Parisians could stroll and admire the urban triumphs of their time. The old, dark Paris was becoming a memory replaced by a city that looked as if it were designed to inspire poetry and revolution in equal measure. As Paris expanded, so too did its symbols of power the Eiffel Tower, now an icon, was originally met with scorn when it was erected in 1889 as the centerpiece of the World's Fair. It was a modernist affront to the classical beauty of Paris, a tall, iron skeleton rising unapologetically into the sky. 
But the tower, like Paris itself, survived the waves of criticism and has since become a symbol of innovation and endurance, a monument to both the future and the city's continual reinvention. The Arc de Triomphe, commissioned by Napoleon in 1806, is another landmark that symbolizes Paris's pride and military prowess. Standing at the top of the Champs-Élysées, it connects the city's imperial past to its modern grandeur. Its position at the center of a starburst of avenues is emblematic of Haussmann's city planning, a nexus where all roads seem to converge, funneling the energy of the city through a single point. The construction of Sacré-Cœur atop Montmartre marked another phase in Paris's architectural evolution. Erected after the Franco-Prussian War, it was as much a monument to repentance as it was a religious building. The basilica stands as a reminder of both Paris's suffering and its resilience. Montmartre itself, with its winding streets and bohemian past, contrasts the geometric precision of Haussmann's boulevards, offering a glimpse into the soul of a city that thrives on both order and rebellion. But for all its grandeur, Paris has always been a city of contradictions. The grandeur of the Louvre, once a royal palace and now the world's largest museum, contrasts with the gritty realities of the neighborhoods that surround it. The museum's glass pyramid entrance, designed by I. M. Pei in the 1980s, was controversial, a symbol of modernism imposed on a historical site. Yet, like the Eiffel Tower before it, the pyramid has become an inseparable part of Paris's identity, bridging the past with the future. As Paris moved into the 20th century, it embraced modernity without fully shedding its historical roots. The construction of the Centre Pompidou, with its exposed skeleton of pipes and colourful tubing, was a bold statement that Paris was not just a museum of the past, but a living city that embraced contemporary art and architecture. The building stands as a testament to Paris's willingness to shock and challenge its own aesthetic conventions, yet within the bounds of its deep-rooted cultural heritage. Today, Paris continues to balance its historic elegance with the demands of modern life. The towers of La Défense, a business district just outside the city, rise like glass and steel counterpoints to the Gothic spires of Notre Dame. Paris is still evolving, shaped by new waves of architects, politicians and dreamers. But beneath the surface, the layers of history remain, visible to anyone willing to look beyond the facades. This is the essence of Paris, a city constantly in flux, where every corner tells a story and where the past and present are forever intertwined.